Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Rumsey. Um, I was supposed to have a synchronous meeting with you this morning at 1030, and unfortunately, uh, something came up that's going to pre prevent me from being there. So I am just making a quick video of the material I was going to cover. Uh, for those of you who wouldn't have been able to make the synchronous meeting anyway, this should be no different than usual. Okay, so our class has three major projects, and those major projects each have different components. Um, I like to do project-based work uh, simply because that's how I find that the work world works a little bit more than individual isolated projects. So this one is called workplace culture. Oftentimes in uh, technical writing courses, the first thing that they teach students is a resume and cover letter. I'm not entirely sure why, since resume and cover letters are not necessarily unique. Um, to technical writing, um, but because uh, applied sciences like engineering are much more career focused, I think that's kind of the mentality. However, uh, job search materials like resume and cover letters are covered in our later course 421 when you're seniors and presumably you're ready to go on the job market. So we decided to go ahead and get rid of this one. Instead what you're going to do is to write a report. Remember this class is technical, uh, technical report writing. Um, and so you're going to write a report with two different parts. First, you're going to be researching um, jobs that you could actually apply for right now. So some of you are sophomores, some of you are juniors or seniors, but it needs to be something that you could apply for today. Um, so it might behoove you to look for internships if you are earlier in your college career. Um, you could look for jobs or part-time jobs or summer jobs, but it needs to be something you could actually apply for. This is not like something where you're supposed to imagine what it'll be like when you're graduating. No, I want you to do it for right now. Okay, after you've done that and you've done some annotations, which I'll explain here in a minute, um, the second half of your report is going to be a report about one of the companies that is posting a job you could apply for. Um, and in this, you're going to need to focus in on the one that seems the most likely or the one that you actually might be applying for. Now, keep in mind, if you do decide to apply and you need a cover letter and resume and want to chat with me about it, I'm totally open to that. I'm just not assigning it to you. I want to draw your attention to the quote here by Margaret Deichel. You can't just walk into an employer's office and say, what's this job you're interviewing me for and how do I fit? Right? You have to go in prepared. Um, the job market for engineers is always pretty good, let's be honest. However, to get a really good job, to get a good job that is going to pay you well and you're going to be satisfied with, you need to go in more prepared than that rather than taking the low the low hanging fruit. And so my encouragement to you is to actually get to know a company and, and its products and how the company works in much more detail so that at the interview you can impress them with your knowledge of their company. Okay, so um, moving on, you'll notice here audience, and actually before I go on, next week you're going to be learning about something I call MAPS. It's an acronym that stands for Mode, Audience, Purpose, and Situation, and I tell you in that lecture that I really do use it for all levels of class, and here you'll notice I use it even in my own work in making you guys uh, assignment sheets. You've got Mode, Audience, Purpose, and Situation right here for you in this uh, set of, of information about Project 1. So when I I say I use it a lot, I'm not lying. Okay, so the audience for this project, for this report, is uh, your classmates and your instructor. However, I want you to think about them as your colleagues and your supervisor. So the idea is that it's supposed to be formal language um, in a really buttoned up sort of business environment, right? Uh, engineering and, and information systems and those sorts of things tend to be a little bit more like khakis and polos if it, rather than being dressed up in a suit. Um, but I still want the language in this to be formal and professional. Um, sort of to give you practice. Okay, so what is this report comprised of? I mentioned there's two different things, but before I get to those, know that the document needs to be well edited. Um, it needs to be free of errors in punctuation and grammar. Um, you're trying to make a good impression, right? And so you want to make sure that you edit as carefully as you can, and in peer reviews, you point out any issues you notice. Um, it should conform to guidelines um, mentioned in uh, IEEE documentation, which is an important course document, so folder on Brightspace. Now, you have to actually have verifiable facts available in this document. You can't just decide to, um, you know, spout your opinion about a company. You actually have to find resources, and those resources need to be cited carefully using IEEE. So instead of MLA, which is probably what you used in 131 in this class, 
class and in future tech writing classes, we use IEEE because it's sort of um, the industry standard for formal writing. All right, so report details. The first thing you're going to have is an introduction. I wouldn't actually start writing the introduction until you've done the other two parts because the introduction needs to, well, introduce what's contained in the report. You're not going to know what is contained within the report until you do the report. So I would almost advise you saving the um, introduction until the end. Okay, um, you're going to provide some background and some context for the positions that you found and the company you chose to research. Okay, so the first part is job annotations and analysis. Um, an annotation is essentially like note taking, but it's note taking with a purpose. So there's going to be a brief uh, written introduction to the section that explains the kind of positions you search for. Then you're going to research various jobs. Um, you are not allowed to use a job you are currently employed within. I, I understand some of you have great jobs already lined up, but I don't care. I want you to actually do the exercise because you have to have something to write about and to practice the genre and practice the writing. Plus, maybe you'll find a better job. You, you don't even know. Um, <clears throat> The other thing is that um, you're going to do an annotated bibliography. So each job posting, you should include the following. The job listing itself and the URL where you found it. Okay, um, You're going to list or explain the required skills for the position. You're going to list or explain the skills you already possess and that would enable you to apply for the position. And then list or explain the skills you lack. So I've, I've included two examples of annotated job postings in Appendix 1. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to it now so I can show you. Um, these were done by um, some professional writing students who actually are English majors, so the job postings are a little bit different than maybe what you'd be looking for, but you can see how two different people did it. This one was looking at an instructional media support person, uh, a position in Houston, Texas. They wrote it in a paragraph, okay, um, with sort of a note paragraph. They could have done this in a list, okay? So qualifications he or she already had, or what's required, what they already have, and what they lack, and each one's sort of a paragraph, okay? The second one option is um, a social media specialist, and they did required skills, and they did bulleted lists. Either one of these is okay. I like the formatting in these to point out that uh, IEEE use, and technical writing uses single space, so you'll notice here that this is single space. Um, you'll also notice that they use headings um, for things like uh, job annotation example one instructions. So use headings, use single space type to make sure that your document is easily organized. So there's two different examples that you can borrow from uh, for this portion, and you're going to have 10 of those. Okay. Okay, sorry about that little pause. I had a cat that needed attention in case you can't see her. This is Pip, and apparently she needed to know what was going on up here as I lecture to you. So it's bring your cat to work day, apparently. Okay, so part two of the report is company research. So one of the job postings, whichever is your favorite one, like this just looks like a dream job kind of thing. Um, I want you to actually take time to research the company. Um, it needs to be a company that's unfamiliar to you. So it need, or, or one that you don't currently work for. Okay, um, this is a research report, so you need to actually find information. You need to research, right? Um, and so that means you need to find credible sources that give you verifiable information. So I'm asking for a minimum of four sources. That means that you need to find more than just the company website. The company website counts as a single source. You might use several different URLs for it because you look at its his you look at the company history, you look at the company culture, you look at the company products. That still counts as a single source. Okay. Um, the other things you can add would be interviews with current employees. Perhaps it's some local company and you happen to know someone, or you could simply call the secretary or receptionist at that company and say you're interested in interviewing someone. Okay? Um, you can look for articles that are scholarly. Um, also trade journals. Those can be in paper, but often they're going to be online periodicals, and those you would find through the library. Um, you can look at primary documents, so documents that the company actually puts out for itself. If they have brochures, if they have commercials, that sort of thing, you can use those. And then website, the, well there it is, no more than one website, meaning the entire company website counts as one source. So I, if you find like newspaper articles, that's okay. I'm not counting that as a web resource, I'm counting that as an online periodical. Okay, you just can't go find um, just any sort of .com um, 
sort of thing. But if you find something in like even Wired magazine or um, I don't know National Geographic or another scientific um, scientific in America, those are sort of trade journals. They're an elevated. They're above sort of Joe Schmo, you know, in his blog post about how awesome his job is. You get the idea, I hope. Okay, so you need to cite all your sources according to IEEE citation rules, and I mentioned that before. And the, the, the section of your report should consist of, um, you're going to look at it as sort of formal memo formatting. Um, there's going to be an introduction. There's going to be a description of the history, current events, pro products, clients, and corporate culture. A uh, description of the kinds of documentation that might go on within that company because remember this is about tech writing it's not just about finding a job it's about using writing on the job and so I want you to know what you'd be walking into if you find a place that um, you'd be just writing reports and writing is okay but not your favorite thing maybe it's not the perfect job for you or maybe you'll just be surprised how much writing is used within the work world work world excuse me and then an explanation of how the company fits into the wider community or industry um, it, you might include a list of research questions to guide you, um, but I actually provided you some in Appendix 2. So let's go down there and take a look. So Appendix 2, research questions. Um, what, what company did you pick and why? You know, what do you already know or think you know about it? Do some brainstorming. Um, what's been said about the company in local news or national news? What products or services do they produce? Um, what's been said about those products? Like maybe you find a place that makes a particular type of widget that is innovative, but that innovation comes at a cost and so you find that there are some environmental concerns that have been raised about it. Those are the sorts of things to find. How is the company structured? What's the hierarchy? Um, what's the history and what are the competitors? Okay, so those are research questions that you can kind of use to write this section of the report. Okay, so conclusion. Um, your conclusion of the report should sum up your findings for both of those major sections. Um, offer an overview of your findings um, on the job search and what you learned overview of what you learn and the research for the company and then address the strengths and weaknesses and whether you might fit into that company okay so reminder this is a single report that has multiple parts an introduction a whole big list of annotations which you need a brief written introduction to so you maybe title the section job annotations and analysis and then you'd write a paragraph describing what it is before you get into those then company research this one's going to be more written rather than lists it needs to be more full sentences um, and so you might have a, another sort of introduction to um, the company and what this section of the report is about okay so use headings to delineate between sections uh, make sure you're introducing things giving what I call good road mapping where you tell your reader what you're talking about before you talk about it and that sort of thing okay so as a reminder um, the instructions for IEEE citations are in uh, important course documents on Brightspace if any of you have questions about this or want to chat you can certainly contact me via email and we can set up a time to video conference or even just talk on the phone I hope you guys are having a great day um, take care have a good one